church can be one of the most judgmental places in the world because Christians, Jews, Catholics, etc., tend to forget what their job prescriptions are. Instead of being lifted up and accepted, loved, forgiven, and understood, you are stoned and criticized, and the worst part, you are constantly judged. I see myself as a Christian, but also being a human, I see myself as a sinner. I, just like most people in the world, did not wait for marriage. I, like most people in the world, had a baby out of wedlock. I, like most people in the world, curse and listen to worldly music. But does that mean that I don't love Jesus? Does that mean I should be judged? Does that mean I should be looked down upon by those holier than thou of the church? Us churchgoers get so wrapped up in the idea of church that we forget that the big man upstairs wants the judging part of his job left up to him and he's not looking to get demoted. Churches are supposed to be a safe haven, a place where anyone can gather and worship. Does that exclude the LGBTQ community? Does that exclude drunks, druggies, and screw-ups? Many feel like it does because they're always singled out and put on display like animals at the zoo. Which is why it's like putting teeth to get them into the house of the Lord, to get them to accept the faith. Church folks get their job description mixed up with God's job description. Proceed to be a support system and give prayers, but leave the judging part up to him. So I wrote this poem because it really irritates me. It's like I noticed it like a long time, but it's just really been irritating me more lately that you really notice in a lot of churches, that like just about every church, churches are just so judgmental. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily the pastor that's doing the judging. It's people in the church, and it's usually the older crowd in the church that does all the judging. Like, they're just so holy, and they don't do anything wrong. They're not sinners. They have never did a sin in their life. They don't sin now. They do everything perfect and by the good book of God. And they don't. They're just as much of a sinner as everyone else, but they pick people out in the church to gossip about in the church, to, to, to judge. And it's like, if you go to a church and you're a single mother... Then it's like, oh well, where's the dad? It's like, why is that your business? Like, I just met you. I don't feel like I should have to give my life story to you. Because I know personally, there's like a lot of gossip goes around in the church. Even though they have, they can have the information completely wrong. It's just, church is like high school. It's like, they won't have any of the information right, but it spreads around the church like wildfire. Like, if you are friends with people on Facebook, like people in your church on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you post something and they take it way out of proportion and now the whole church knows about it. And I know that personally. But <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. And that makes, I know that makes people not want to go to church. I mean, I go to church anyway. Because, I mean, I'm not coming to impress you. I'm not coming to be your friend. I'm coming to hear Jesus and I'm, then I'm leaving and going home. So, it's like, I know that makes people not want to go to church. It's, and then another thing is, even though I know the Bible says that, you know, being gay is wrong. I know this. Being addicted to drugs and alcohol or pornography, that's wrong. I understand that. But when you, like preach about it at church and you throw it like daggers at people that makes that person not want to go to church and at the end of the day it's not my job to judge you because you're gay I don't care if you're gay thank you for coming to church though you know it's nice that you come to church they make gay people feel like they're not wanted at church you know it's like if you're a lesbian or if you're gay or you're trained or LGBTQ you're not it, they make them feel not wanted because then people are going to want to try like you can't force the gayness out of people you know, I think, and I think that's what people have in their mind, and oh, it's your decision that you're being gay. Just stop, just, you know, stop liking this, uh, your same sex. It, it, it's a decision you're making. And from, I mean, I don't know, I'm not gay, so I wouldn't know, but apparently it's not just something that you decide that you wake up one morning and, oh, I'm going to like boys today. Or I'm going to like girls today, you know, or I'm going to be confused, I'm going to like both. I don't know, so, I, I mean, I've never been gay, but I don't think it's a decision that you just wake up one morning and decide to do. Because I feel like if that's the case, then you would have, people wouldn't just decide to to do that, you know. I, but, I mean, like I said, it's not my job to judge you. I don't care if you're gay or not. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to ask you if you are okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> you know, it's like if you was judging me for being straight. But a lot of churches do that. If you, like, if you curse, then, oh my God, you need prayer. And I curse, and y'all know I curse. 
I'm not that curse like a sailor. I don't curse as much as I used to, but I curse. I mean, I don't listen to all gospel music. I listen to everything. I can listen to a gospel song right now and then right after that. I can listen to like a, a rap song. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go, but it happens. But does that mean that, oh my God, I, I don't want Jesus and I'm going to hell? No. That's not what it means. <laughs> Hopefully that's not what it means. But I mean, that doesn't mean you could just take it out of me. I like to listen to different kinds of music and the church makes you feel like you're not welcome if you're different. And I think that's a big problem and you wonder why you can't get people into the church. That's why. And it's like... And it's like if people know you're gay, and I've seen this happen to one of my friends. Um, her mom found out that she was interested in girls, and it was I felt bad for her. One Sunday at church, uh, she tried to she literally dragged her up to the altar to get prayed for. It's like the whole church knew, and it's like I don't think that's how she wanted people to find out. And I'm like, that's very embarrassing. I feel real bad for her. Like, I was sitting there, and I just, I wanted to go up there, like, save her and roll her eyes, because I know how her mom is. And I'm just like, that's not how you handle that. That's not how you do that. That's that's only going to make it worse, because you embarrassing her in front of people. You It's, it's her decision to let people know what her preference is. And that's if she wants to let them know that. Everybody doesn't have to know. But... She felt like she and like she like was literally dragging her up there to get prayed for because that's not right, you know. And I'm like, I don't think that's how she wanted people to find that out. But anyway, it's not my business. Um, sipping my tea like Kermit, you know. Yeah, so that's pretty much my inspiration behind this poem. I just think the church church people need to be less judgmental and more forgiving and more understanding and more because it's like you don't you can't force somebody out of the situation if you don't understand the situation you know it's not my i can't judge you on something i don't understand that's just like um i did a poem a while ago and i'll link it in the description about abortions i don't believe in abortions but who am i to judge you for getting one you know i don't believe in abortions it's because i believe you can put your child up for adoption if you really don't want a child you can't handle this child you are you just not ready for a baby you don't want one or something happened like you got raped and you got pregnant I just think that you could put your child up for adoption because the child didn't decide to be here so why take away the child's life so I, I don't believe in abortion but I'm not gonna judge you because you got an abortion I'm not gonna say oh I hate you and you need to go get prayer you're going to hell because you got an abortion I'm not gonna do that because everybody has their own reasons for doing their own thing the church needs to be less judgmental. So more people will come to church if people were less judgmental. It's okay to bring up something. Everybody knows that the Bible says you're not supposed to have these uh, these gay feelings. You know, everybody knows that. You don't have to throw it at them every service. The whole service. Everyone knows this, okay? Because I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I feel under attack when I go to church and all of a sudden we're throwing out uh having sex before marriage and having a baby before marriage i always feel under attack even though it's probably not directed to me i know i, I feel kind of under attack by it so i understand how one would feel as a gay person being under attack at church i understand i understand that aspect of it so that's all i have to say i'm gonna keep rambling on because i can talk about this this subject like all day long because it's like it's a real issue and people really wonder why people you can't get people to go to church and then like when a person get their confidence up to go to church you knock them right back down they don't want to come anymore because they feel singled out they feel like you're putting them on the spot you know they put you putting a light on them and that's that's really not right at the end of the day i'm leaving that up to the big guys i'm not you can't tell somebody they're going to hell you don't know that. That's God's decision to judge if you're going to heaven or hell. That's a decision. That's a conversation you're going to have to have with Jesus, you know, on when your judgment day comes. When you make it to the pearly gates and he's going to ask you these questions, that's between you and God. Okay, that's not my business. That's not her business, his business. It's you and Jesus. That's between you and Jesus. So, um, yeah. I'm done for the hundredth time. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share this video, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye.